Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. Uh, off screen I was doing a little bit of co oping helping people out with Vort. And I happened to collect a couple of pieces of that Lothric Knight set. Uh, including the shield, which is actually quite decent. And this nice little chest piece with a flowing red cape. So, we're gonna be rocking that for a little while. As we head on out into the Undead Settlement. At the base of the High Wall of Lothric. So as we come down here, uh, once you reach the base of the stairs, the gate is going to open from the other side, and a bunch of dogs are going to attack these hollows. Uh, we are going to let the dogs clear everything out for us. Besides, we actually have some things to grab uh, right behind the gate. So these dogs, uh, they will mostly ignore you unless you're like right in front of their line of sight. They're busy munching on the corpse. And there's actually a clever little hint here, because the item that they're gathered around is an alluring skull. Alluring skulls will catch the attention of enemies if you throw them. So if you're trying to pull enemies or bait them in a certain direction to bypass them, uh, you want to throw an alluring skull. So it's a clever little hint that it's there keeping the dog's attention like that. Uh, so we have a bunch of these pilgrims with the, the stones chained to their back. They've all made it to this broken bridge and died. <laughs> Please grant me death. Undo my shackles. <laughs> all but one. <laughs> oh. Oh, then it's true. A champion of ash as I live and breathe. To be in your presence is a great honor. I am Yol of Londor, a pilgrim, as you can see, only somehow I failed to die as was ordained. Well, perhaps my calling lies elsewhere. Say, Champion of Ash, how does the idea of taking me into your service strike you? I was once a sorcerer. Surely I can be of use. Oh... I am honored, truly. I should be dead, yet you have granted me purpose anew. I, Yol of Londor, do solemnly swear myself to you. There are times when his inflection makes him sound like uh, a decrepit old Jafar. But regardless, we're going to take him back to Firelink Shrine and accept his services anyway. Yol of Londor. Uh, Londor is the land of hollows. He mentioned he himself was a hollow and a pilgrim. Uh, so these pilgrims from Londor, the land of hollows, seem to come to Lothric just with the sole purpose of dying. I find Londor and everything that goes on there really fascinating and I'm really eager to, uh, Explore that and learn more. How did that not hit? I guess the hitbox of the blade went right over the dog. Right over his back. There's uh, quite some interesting stuff that I was hinting at last time going on with the Pilgrims of Londor. Uh, but this, once we pass through the gate and we come to our first bonfire, this, oh, don't want to summon. This is uh, the Undead Settlement proper. This area is enormous. It is truly gigantic. That message is a huge lie. Don't jump off there. Uh, if this is your first Souls game and you're playing online, you're going to notice a lot of these player-inscribed uh, messages that tell you to do things like jump off of cliffs. And it's not always clear when they're just trolling you, because sometimes you do have to take a leap of faith to get to an item. That one is a lie. <laughs> Don't jump. Don't do it. Let's see, you have to attack this hanging corpse in order to get the small leather shield I was clearly holding. And before you go further down in this building, uh, let's see, there is this that you can attack. We'll call back to Demon Souls. Uh, ooh, I'm aiming that 
poorly. Try not to step off the cliff, too. Uh, there is a body that we cut down. And we'll get to that sooner or later. There are, there are a lot of those in the Undead Settlement in particular. They pull that trick a lot here. Uh, so, this is like I'm, I'm was saying. Um, this is an intricate, tricky area. Very layered zone. And you can carve it up into distinct little sectors. Oh, I wanted to do a plunging attack. Each sector has a bunch of really well-concealed pathways. Overall, this zone is like insanely well constructed. Um, should be one more of you patrolling? Good. Those enemies can be kind of slippery just because of how they move, how far they can actually reach you when you're outside of their what you think is their melee attack range, and because of the their kind of small compacted hitboxes. Loretta's Bone. Loretta is a name that should sound familiar. Old, discolored human bone with several holes bored into it. A human a woman's corpse in the undead settlement was found clutching this bone. Her name was Loretta. Loretta is the name of the woman that Grey Rat wanted us to uh, give the blue tearstone ring to. Uh, let's try. Okay, I was close enough. You can usually tell the explosive barrels apart from the regular ones. Ah, not far enough. That is too far. Excellent. Whatever. We'll just go deal with this. Uh, let's just solve the problem. Wow! <laughs> I really like... I'm, I'm digging the noise that he was making there. <laughs> uh, now the fun part starts. Don't these guys look a lot like the uh, the, the ministers from Demon Souls? These ladies, I should say. I think it's it's the frilly thing around their necks, on top of the size. Also, a lot like th there's uh, more than a passing similarity to Hemwick Charnel Lane from Bloodborne in this area. Um, one thing that really reminds me of it, aside from a bunch of cultists slash some sort of worshippers gathering around a pyre, um, you can roll into the smaller villagers and stagger them, as I was doing before, uh, much like you can with the witches in Hemwick. Soul of an Unknown Traveler, not bad. Um, they completely changed the names and the suffixes of all the souls, so I don't know what gives, what kind of soul gives what denomination of currency in this. So it's largely irrelevant until you use them. It's always nice to initiate uh, combat with a roll into them, just to ensure that they can't get any kind of attack started. There's a nice Estes Shard right there amidst the burning bodies. We're going to go ahead and equip a bow. Because up in that tree, you can see there's a corpse dangling with an item on it. I don't think it's a particularly amazing item, but, you know, it's there, so it's worth getting. We're going to try to be as exhaustive as possible. But again, this area is gigantic. So, hmm. Expect me to do a lot of uh, doubling back on myself around here. Mm, okay, nothing dropped behind me. Oh, I still have my fist on. <laughs> or, uh, no weapon. Okay. Even rolling away staggered him a bit. We'll count that as lucky. Uh, Dark Souls 2... Dark Souls... The 3's level design. Jesus. Gets dis... Oh, hold on. Oh, it is this one that triggered. Huh. Not the one that I was in closer proximity to. This this one barely saw me at the edge of his line of sight. Oh hell. Oh. Shit. No, no, no. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Dark Souls 2's level design gets described a lot as hub and spoke. There's, like, Majula in the middle and a bunch of uh, spokes that branch out from there. And then, occasionally... 
those branches will branch out themselves into different forked pathways. Uh, Dark Souls 1 is kind of similar with Firelink Shrine going a few different directions, but the crazy thing is how they feed into other areas, how everything is connected in one. Um, another corpse you can cut down. Ah, uh, that was another soul. Um, it gives the pathways that you can take this really mind-blowing um, shine. Dark Souls 3 is more like a vein. Um, it's one, it's kind of like one line that takes you everywhere, and sometimes you can take an exit ramp that leads to an entirely different branch. Um, the individual, like, little discrete areas are just as enormous and maybe even more complex than they've ever been, but the world itself is not as interconnected as one or even two. Uh, also, this is kind of new. It's nice. There is a little pot of Estus there that can refill your health. An ancient talisman depicting a holy symbol bestowed upon the Warriors of Sunlight, equipped to pledge oneself to the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant. Warriors of Sunlight are brilliantly beaming cooperators who place their golden signatures to help those in need, for it is their duty to deliver a great con conquest to their summoner. Very early on, we can become a Sunbro. Uh, covenants are factions that you can align with, and they usually provide some sort of benefit for your loyalty, along with collectibles that you can gather to deepen your allegiance to the Covenants, and get some cool rewards, which range from... Um, stuff like spells, to weapons, to gestures. Good, just from the edge of the range. These things are freaking... Um, uh, most covenants focus on the online aspect of the game, either by enhancing co-op or PvP. This is a really easy to miss item here, and I think it's just another soul. Ah, uh, yeah. So we'll have that 20,000 uh, soul key sooner than you think. Probably by the end of uh, the settlement. Uh, so we got the Way of the Blue Covenant before. Uh, Emma introduced us to that one. It lets you summon blue sentinels into your world automatically to help you out if somebody invades you. As long as you're in that covenant at the time. Which you just... You, you, it's kind of like Bloodborne's Oath Runes where you just kind of equip and unequip them on the fly. Except, in this case, you don't even have to go back to uh, the Dream of Firelink Shrine to switch that out. You can do it literally just on the fly. And... Oh, shit, I didn't want to take that last hit. I am pretty close to a bonfire, though, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, Sun Bros are co-op based, as they've always been, except they have a new little wrinkle in this one. So, as usual, they're co-op focused, where you can, you know, use them to help beat bosses, or if you're in need of help, you can summon a Sunbro. But you can also now do co-op invasions as a Sunbro, which is really cool. Oh, I have a fatty up top casting at me. I haven't seen them use their fiery command grab yet, which is kind of shitty. Usually leaves them open for a while, too. Uh, let me just head up the ladder. Not worry too much about her right for a second. Maybe I can go ahead and get a plunging attack after I grab this. Tight Knight Shard. Mm, not sure where exactly she went. She's not trying to climb. I don't think she can. Nope. Too big to climb the ladder. So she's just chilling out somewhere. Can't see her. She's not making noise. Fuck. Aw. Well, she was in a terrible spot to get a plunging attack. Ooh, sailed right over me. Thank you, good hitboxes. Come on, let me get that backstab going. Nah, okay. That's cool. And you have dropped nothing. The last one dropped the spike mace already, so it's fine. Not sure if they can drop their armor set. Um, I'm assuming that it's available somehow. Most armor sets that you see in the game are things that you can grab eventually, um, either through a random drop or out in the world, or uh, from a merchant. We are being invaded by an NPC. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that NPC right now. 
Ah, the Crystal Lizard got away. He will respawn, though. This is not Demon Souls, where you get punished extremely hard for letting lizards slip away. Uh, so, we're not actually done with the area covered by that first Undead Settlement bonfire, so we're just going to teleport back there. Uh, we're going to ignore the, in the NPC invader for now. We'll be back there. We will be back. But, again, this is such a densely layered and packed area. The entire zone, I should say. Um, that you'll usually want to take several trips through each distinct little zone of the area. Just to make sure that you've covered all your bases. Um, the way they conceal paths here, you will wind up... It, it's your first time through, and... You don't have some kind of uh, guide or visual reference. You'll wind up doubling back through a lot. And we want to clear those guys out just to make sure they don't follow us to where we're going. Because they can be kind of a nuisance. And again, if they follow you far enough, they will sandwich you up here. And you don't want that. So, where is... I know there should be two of you. Where is the other one? I'm guessing it... Mm, oh, you were just around the corner. And that is a wild death throw. <laughs> Shit. Perfect. Uh, oh, and we got his, his uh, pitchfork. Now, you see an item up on that roof. We'll get to that soon. Oh. Oh, you're just gonna keep going, huh? Damn. I think this one is the... Oh. Shit. Normally, he drops his flamberg. Flamberg? However you pronounce it. Um... Sure, there's another opportunity to get one of those, and it's not like I was planning on using it, but I don't know. He saved me the trouble of having to kill him. The Caduceus Round Shield. Okay, we kind of cleared this spot out, um, but I just want to give a little preview of what's to come. The safe way of going about this is to come over here first. This is a path that's really easy to miss. And again, it's going to split off pretty soon. Uh, this lower road, I'm not exactly sure what it's here for. I think it's just to give you a little bit of cover because you can hear things clanking in against the rock. Uh, there are a bunch of these types of enemies throwing knives at you. Uh, no, I think they're actually using blow darts. Yeah. Um, so it's to give you a little bit of cover while fighting some of the melee guys if you choose to lure them down there. Oh, another one fell. Great. So next up, before you worry about collecting anything, um, you want to head up onto the roofs so that you can just clear the blow dart guys out. Uh, oh, hello. Hi. Where did you come from? Oh, right, he fell onto the lower path. I thought he fell straight off the cliff and died. Back with a vengeance, man. Okay, there's you. There's a third one, I want to say? Or did we already kill him? Hmm. No, he must already be dead. Okay. I think, I hope. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah, okay, he's dead. We did take care of him. The firebomb's down here. And drop. Wait, is this the wrong... Yeah, this is the wrong drop. Uh, whoops. I dropped off at the wrong roof. Or the wrong house. That's okay, though. I did notice an item over here to my right that I missed. Which is another soul. Ah, we'll take it. And it's a pretty short hike to get back there. So let me this time be a little bit more careful about where I drop. In fact, I don't even have to make a drop this time. Uh, 
another Nana disappeared. The grand thing carries a cage. He ever has his cage. And Nana's never coming back. So come into the cage and become Nana's shade. Another Nana disappeared. So and so Another word for shade in this context is ghost or phantom. Uh, phantom is the term that the game uses for either invaders or cooperators. And he's talking about someone's cage. So that's actually a hint for right here, because you might otherwise mistakenly attack this enemy who you could totally lock onto and kill, uh, but who is otherwise non-hostile to you right now. So he's saying, climb into the cage and become Nana's shade, or phantom. So let's do that. So we climb into the cage, and uh, Cage Bro tosses us down into this pit. Let's shed some light on this. Uh, I bought a torch at the Hadden Maiden, so let's see what's down here. Um, a lot of these rusted cages <laughs> and bodies. Sacks and sacks of bodies. So Cage Bro has been busy. He's been very, very busy. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to get any kind of visual reference point for where you are. Because the, the ceiling is entirely covered, and there's no other way in or out of this area, aside from that. Taking uh, the cage down. Uh, there's a War God wooden shield over here, which we'll read a little bit about. The bizarre pattern featured on the shield is the mark of a mad god, revered as a god of war in remote regions. This is uh, the wooden shield that the Lion Knights of Ferosa use in Dark Souls 2. Well, what's up? This pit is for hollows, not for the likes of you, sane folk. Or perhaps you are a hollow, posing as otherwise? <laughs> yes, yes, then we are just fine. It's important to know who you are. But we'll all be mad, soon enough. And should you be undead, well, all the more so. Beware, the shackles of the gods are fragile. You might need this. Etch it on your heart if you feel your sanity slipping. Come here to pile up your victims, for that will form your anchor. You'll see when you go mad. They'll be your family. <laughs> You'll go mad one day, but not today. Take my advice. Use this bone and leave this place. This pit is for hollows and for the occasional madman fond of piling up victims. You've better things to do, I'd hope. <laughs> this pit is for hollows and you've that is holy knight hodrick the phantom who invaded us earlier in the settlement and he introduces us to the mound maker's covenant and this is a malformed vertebrae found by the mad with a queer symbol on its inside proof of the shackles of the gods equipped to pledge oneself to the mound maker's covenant 
the mound makers wish only to add to their mounds, becoming mad spirits whether summoned as cooperators or invaders. They are blithe to those around them, for in their minds, any kill might lead to another shackle. Well, we're going to talk more about the Mound Makers Covenant next time. Uh, I really like the Mound Makers a whole lot, so I have a lot to say about them. For the time being, uh, there's only one way out of here, which is why Hodrick gives you that homeward bone. So we're going to take it out of here. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone.